by this time you might all be familiar with these images yes these are swarms of locusts invading various parts of india particularly the states of gujarat madhya pradesh rajasthan and even uttar pradesh the situation is so bad that it is said to be the worst locust attack in the last two decades so in this video we'll discuss all about the locust attack in india but before that i want all of you to watch this video bikawa desh pakistan ke paas aatanki bhi nahi bache सबको तो हमने सूली पर चढ़ा दिया तो पाकिस्तान अब टिड्डियों को आतंकी बनाकर भारत भेज रहा है कि क्या आतंकियों के बाद भारत में टिड्डियों वाली साजिश कर रहा है पाकिस्तान एज पर दिस फेमस एंकर दिस अटैक वॉज इंड्यूस्ड बाई पाकिस्तान द एंकर ऑर्नब गोसो में कंपेयर दिस लोकस्ट अटैक विद द एक्ट ऑफ टेररिज्म विच वॉज स्पॉन्सर्ड बाई द पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट बट लेट एस नॉट गेट कैरिड अवे बाई सच रॉन्ग इन्फॉर्मेशन it is because pakistan is not behind these attacks these attacks are in fact very natural but they are exaggerated by climate changes but it is very unfortunate and ironical to see such misinformations being spread on great debates such as these one which are watched by over million people across the country so please note that pakistan is not behind these locust attacks in fact it is also one of the worst affected countries by these attacks The invasion from swarms of locusts began on April 11 this year when these swarms entered India through Pakistan's Sindh province. They first entered several districts of Rajasthan and then the swarms spread to various states such as Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and even Uttar Pradesh. So what are locusts? Simply put, locusts are large insects. They are basically grasshoppers. There is not much difference between a locust and a grasshopper, but grasshoppers turn into locusts when their behavior changes. There are two phases here actually. Basically, when these insects are in solitary phase, they are called as grasshoppers. But slowly, when their population starts increasing or their population density starts increasing, they become gregarious. In ecology, gregariousness is the tendency to form social groups for cooperative food hunting. Simply put, it is a nature of species to come together to hunt, to attack or to eat together. So these gregarious grasshoppers form groups which are called as swarms of locusts there can be three forms of swarms first small pockets of locusts confined to certain areas are called as outbreaks second form is they are slightly larger in groups but they are still geographically confined and they are called as upsurge and lastly the most disastrous one is plague where locusts are separated by breeding locations but gather together in swarms But what causes these grasshoppers to turn into gregarious? Well, according to various scientific studies, locusts become gregarious when they constantly touch each other on their hind legs, and this constant touching releases a large amount of serotonin. This is also called as a happy hormone and is even released in humans. So because of this, more and more number of grasshoppers start forming groups together in this gregarious phase. And you should also note here that during this process of gregariousness. a number of physical changes are also induced in these insects they include change in size change of color from green to a shade of yellow brown and also strengthening of their muscles and eventually when locusts swarm they adopt aligned movement that is they fly or march together for hundreds of kilometers in just one day and as their population starts increasing the available food in the region becomes deficient so they start venturing into new greener areas Large swarms of locusts contain crores of individuals within them and they can fly up to 200 kilometers a day and the main worrying part is that they destroy all the agricultural fields or greenery that come in their path you might be surprised to hear that an adult locust can eat up to 2 kilograms of food per day and more importantly a swarm of locust in 1 square kilometer area can eat the same food as that can be eaten by 3500 people in a day So this is the reason why we should all be worried about these attacks because they can cause agrarian crisis and because of this they can also induce huge economic losses on a country This swarm that is currently attacking India has its root in 2018 cyclones and heavy rainfalls how see for any locust to change its behavior there are certain required conditions these required favorable conditions include rainfall wet soil and moist air 
So heavy rainfalls and cyclones in 2018 brought floods in many regions in the Horn of Africa. These regions were in the countries of Ethiopia, Somalia and Kenya. So these extremely favorable conditions help locusts breed exponentially. One female locust can lay anywhere between 50 to 100 eggs. So by 2019, the population of locusts in the Horn of Africa had reached the swarm level. And after this, they flew from Africa to Iran, Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Their movement is usually aided by the direction of winds and this way they reached Pakistan. And finally, this year they flew all the way across Arabian Sea to reach India, particularly the states of Rajasthan, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. Locusts are known throughout the history. The oldest record dates back to 2500 BCE which was recorded in the tombs of Egypt. They are also mentioned in many important religious books including Bible and Quran. They have also been recorded in ancient China, Greece, Syria and Rome. From last one month, farmers in India are working with the government agencies to save their lands from these locust attacks. They have employed various techniques which include spraying pesticides, playing drums, playing music or even employing police sirens. But recently many experts have expressed their concerns over the usage of chemical measures to drive away these locusts. They have advised the government to employ some non-chemical measures to contain these attacks. These include destroying the breeding grounds of locusts that is destroying their eggs and also the usage of cypress screen or net systems and the dothar method. But in the long run, the government should devise an insect control technique that involves plowing the fallow lands where locusts are resting. The government might also consider introducing natural predators such as birds and reptiles. Above all, interstate and international cooperation is very much necessary to contain the spread of these locusts.